Me the generation gap. For years now, Mum just won't leave my hair alone. I don't know why, but we always seem to fight about it. Go upstairs, have a shower, and wash your hair. I washed it this morning. Well, wash it now. You always find any problems with my hair. I never say anything about it's your hair. It's filthy. Do you think if there was something wrong with my hair, the school wouldn't say, would get a haircut? Well, I'm quite sure if the schoolmaster saw it right now, he'd ask you to wash it. Just go upstairs, have a shower, and shampoo your hair. Well, I'm not getting a cut to look like an idiot. You're going up to shampoo it to make it look clean. But you want me to get a haircut every time so I, so I look like an idiot. That's what you want, isn't it? So I look like everybody else and I look like an idiot. That's all you want. And as long as that haircut's like that... Go upstairs okay. and shampoo your hair. I can't Right now. Let's get this done. Get that done. If you perfect. don't like it, you can pack your bag. Go upstairs and wash your hair now. Right now. Right now. And just have one more word. Or I'll belt See, you. that's it. Or I'll belt you. See, as soon as you're losing an argument, you say, oh, yeah, I'll belt you. I'll belt you. Now, shame. Forget about it. Right me. now. You're a loser sometimes. It was never meant to be a drama. We were never told it was a drama. There were verbal things. There were ver verbal contracts, if you like to call them that. Never our surname would be given out publicly. Never our street name would be named. Never was it going to be called Sylvania Waters. That came to light about three weeks before the end of the, before it was they finished filming. What stage did you find out that there was no $250,000? On the Tuesday night, we all went to dinner. We all knew then that I'd made one... Well, we all then realised it was going to cost a quarter million dollars to make the series, and we would get ten, which was increased to thirteen. Why didn't you stop it then? Because it was still going to be a documentary series on an, Austra an interesting Australian family, and we'd been chosen. And so Laurie didn't like that. No. He, w he still had that feeling something was wrong, and Joanne didn't like that and left home because of it. And why did you not trust their instincts? You trusted your own. You I thought, no, this will be okay. I, I think I had trusted the BBC. They said there was going to be no harm. No one would be damaged. Um, Joanne was silly not to be in it. Laurie, you're ridiculous. Uh, we're, not, we're not here to exploit you. We're not here to upset you or upset Australia or Australian people. It's going to be a magnificent... Australian production. It's going to be a magnificent thing to show the Brits and we, it, we don't even know if it will be shown in Australia. And that's exactly what they said. At what stage did you doubt that what they told you maybe wouldn't be true? Two weeks before the 21st, Ron Knapp, our manager for our business, rang us and said, I think you'd best go and get both newspapers. Laurie got up, seven o'clock in the morning, went round bought the two newspapers. He was a long time coming back because he'd already read the Telegraph. And um, that was when we, on the Saturday afternoon, rang Harry Bardwell from the ABC and asked to see the tapes. And he said, I'm very sorry, you can't. So we knew we were going to have a very bumpy ride. Why didn't you pull out then? We couldn't. We went to a barrister on the Monday, as soon as we possibly could get to a barrister. And there was nothing we could really do at all. We signed our lives away. Would they have sued you for a lot of money? I don't know what the consequences would be. I know it's been a very long ten months from July to now. It's been the longest. It's like a nightmare. One day you like yourself, one day you don't. You go in a, it's, it's like a big vicious circle. You'd think you're going insane. So there you were, you're in the middle of this thing, you, you know now you've done something that you shouldn't have done. You've made a mistake, you feel trapped, yep. you can't get out of it. Nope. You get legal opinion, you can't get out of it. No. What happens then to you? Do you just grit your teeth and go on with it or try and make the most of it or what? I don't know whether you would call it shame, embarrassment. Uh, you get riddled with... Um, so much contempt to think that the people that were in our house filming us were our friends. For five months they were our friends. They knew, they knew what they were doing to us. They knew what they were going to do to us. You've got the knockers, people you don't even know, mm -hmm. who, did they spit at you in the street? Did they shout at you? I mean, what actually happened? I think the... Um, the first Saturday night after the series on the 21st, 
there were carloads of people of an evening going past the house, yelling out our names. You're drunk. Nolene, you're a drunk. I'm not a drunk. I'm not a drunk at all. That was the publicity from the ABC in Sydney, giving that information to the newspapers. They knew exactly how we cheaped. Invariably, if the crew were filming, the boomsman would go and make a bourbon and coke for me, or get me another bourbon and coke. So you see, when you put it all together now, and you, you're sitting back here 10 months later, looking down the barrel of that gun, it was a set-up job. They did set us up. We were vulnerable. We were outspoken. We all have our different views on things. We were a top little family to film. Have you become almost the same kind of victims of, of the press as, I mean, something like the royal family almost? I mean, every move, everything you do is now reported on, can make a headline. If you went to the doctor, would they say, she's gone for what? A facelift or whatever? Of course. Is that true? Yes. Yes. You get followed. Um, when I had the incident with Mr. Brian Howe, Oh, no, they that was interesting, wasn't it? Well, I think Mr. Brian Howe, and I will say Mr. because I was brought up properly, um, should really read a script before he speaks at luncheon. And last week, Deputy Prime Minister Brian Howe was the latest to criticise Nolene's lifestyle. Nolene admits she has a drinking problem, wants to give up smoking, has a very close relationship with the TAB, and is constantly vacillating between Gloria Marshall and Cream Coats. Up until that, that was about five weeks, I had really shut myself away. I was absolutely disgusted with what I saw. I hated it. I hated every single... The only thing that was good was the music and Michael's voiceover. The rest, I hated. Did you want to die? Yes. Would you have actually taken some sort of measures? Were you that low? I was very low. Um, I had a very good supportive family and a very supportive husband. Yes, it was a very, very hard time of my life. How many nights did you go to bed without crying? <sighs> not many. Or not crying during the day, not many. If it wasn't the media, it was what people were saying without knowing me. Because I'm not really... I don't rant and rave. And if you watch the series again, there's two arguments which are right through 12 episodes. It was unfairly edited. I feel that if anyone was proud of it, I, I really honestly thought one of them would have come back to Australia to hold our hands because they knew exactly what was going to happen to us because they were the ones giving the information to the papers. Have you heard from them? No, not a word. Not a word. Did you try and contact them? No. Because you just feel so hurt and betrayed. I think I will have uh, my, my chance to speak to all three of them when I go to England with the book. I was going to say, don't you want to knock on their door and... No, two wrongs don't make a right. Um, to be allowed, to allow directors or producers to do another cruel thing, as cruel, and he's, this is the third time he's done it, to make such a mess of three families' lives, I can't think of a punishment, anything that is a fitting punishment for that. Do you think God will punish him? Do you believe in God? Um, well, God and I are not on really good terms at the moment, as I said to you before. <laughs> Why um, not? <laughs> well, you know, I've been asking God since about the 2nd of July last year just to make things easier, and every day it's not easier. Some days I shake my head and think to myself, my goodness, you know, I'm halfway through my life, I've written a book, um, I've sung a song, um, I've been in Adelaide, I've been in the Grand Prix, um, I've met some fantastic people, but I, if I could trade it all, I, would, I was very happy just being Ma Baker, 48 McIntyre Crescent, still planning orders. So you'd, you'd do anything to actually roll the old clock back yeah. and make another decision? Yeah.